And look at this. We are currently in ITS. This is Harlow Branch, isn't Hollow it? Branch, yeah. yeah. Hollow Branch, yeah. So Harlow Branch, and as you can see, we are covered in red at the moment. They have every single thing that you can think about oh, with Mubuki. D Wall, if you're a D Wall guy, but I'm not. But <laughs> yeah, as you can see here, we're actually here to buy a area light that we're going to be needing for the dark. So it is going to be this one here. We're going to buy two of these and two six amp hour batteries as well, because I hate working in the dock. You guys probably already know. What the big boy? Well, nah, mate, that is just too much. We, yeah, we don't work in a building. <laughs> just imagine your garage just full of Milwaukee tools. That is crazy. Oh, is this the. Yeah, it is. There you are. The one with the extra bite. What do they call it? Yeah, max bite. Yeah, that's it. Ah, oh, oh, man. Like what heaven. Heaven. I want to spend one here, but I also want to be disciplined. <laughs> Look at all this. If you guys obviously need any tools for Milwaukee and stuff like that, feel free to come here. Honestly, if you think of something Milwaukee, they definitely got it here. So M12 torque wrench here as well. This is what I need. They're bloody well expensive. They're like 500 pounds. Yeah, it's for the one key yeah. one yet. On that. And how much are your speakers? He's actually uh, uh, 150. 150, what for that? Uh, Is that M18 or 12? Yeah, this one though. Nothing M12. Yeah. We're not rich, alright? <laughs> yeah, if you guys need it, come to ITS in Harlow. They'll sort you out, I'm sure of it. Anyway, we'll catch you guys because we're going to be trying this out today. So we'll catch you guys when we get there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a tip. Tip. Tip, tip, tip. Two new batteries as well. <laughs> Two new batteries. Oh. oh, it's so dark. Still dark. It's so nice to ride without a check engine light. Very nice. I forgot to often read this to diagnose a non starter on a Vauxhall Astro. I think I can't remember what she said, but Vauxhall, I think. Anyway, let's get to it. And here we are on the first drive here in Afton Regis. So we have a Vauxhall Corsa, not an Astra like what I thought it was. But yeah, it's a Vauxhall Corsa in for a non-start. So let's have a look and see. Previously the RAC diagnosed this as a apparently lean fuel and that's why it's not starting. So they started like playing around with the valves and you know the purge valve that's what it's called it's very common on these to be fair to course lean fuel and stuff so i think that's a completely separate error anyway so for the time being what we're going to do is to get this car started and running because the woman needs it as soon as possible and that's why we are here very early in the morning and uh, if you have a look john bear with we go no stop yeah, crank no start scenario. And I don't know if you can remember from last time, we had something very similar on an Astra J and it was a failed coil pack, but obviously we have to prove that it's failed. So we're gonna be testing it with our spark plug tester to see if it's actually getting any voltage or anything like that. When I asked when was the last time it was serviced, she said, oh, I don't know. So we're gonna check on the spark plug, see if it's actually working or not. And we're gonna check the coil pack as well, see if it's working or not. So let's get to it. Here is John attempting to remove the coil pack. How are you doing, mate? You okay? It's coming out. It's coming out, is it? All right, remove it. Remove the plug first off. Eesh. All right, okay. So we have just tested the coil pack and it was producing spark, obviously, with our spark plug tester here. However, however, when we were testing it, it died, basically. So we're testing it halfway through and then it just died. Basically it started not producing spark. So we are gonna be replacing that coil pack because I know that that coil pack is faulty. Basic test just with this. Literally costs you about 10 pounds. Get one of these. Oh, we are driving back to the customer's house now because we bought uh, her new spark plugs and coil pack. Since it hasn't been serviced for a while, I thought, you know what, change the spark plugs as well. It's probably been due for a very long while. With this one, unfortunately, we have to use the cheaper coil pack because the customer thought that it was too expensive for the Hella coil pack, so I was like, okay. I'll give you an alternative, but there is no warranty or guarantee on this one. In my opinion, right, I'm gonna be using Starline coil pack on this but in my opinion with the Starline one previously fitting it it hasn't
hasn't gone wrong. Anyway, nothing has come back to me anyway. So I reckon they're okay. It's not like I wouldn't recommend it. It's not my first choice, let's say. But I think they're a okay. But anyway, let's get to the customer and let's get it done. So here is the brand new set of spark plugs and core pack. These NGK spark plugs will definitely do the job. NGK's good track record of reliability promises to build customer to business loyalty long term. Looking at the spark plugs, I definitely made a good decision in replacing them, as they are rusty, which also tells me that they have not been replaced since probably new. Are you really? learning? No. No. You never learn anyway. All right. All right. Anyway, anyway, after putting the spark plugs in the hole, it is important that I tighten them one by one to manufacturer specification to avoid rounding the aluminium threads. Now, we're going to be installing the new coil pack, and yes, it's already greased up. I do believe though that the old coil pack failed due to the old spark plugs, but this is just my scary, 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 scary. Alright, we'll stop there. <laughs> Here we go straight away and it's purring nicely as well lovely jobly I'm so glad to say that we got this vehicle back on the road quicker than the customer thought we have provided her a convenient and excellent service so whenever she needs us again we'll be her first point of call anyway on to the next job and here we are with this Ford Transit here in 4A gearbox replacement clutch dual mass flywheel and also drive shaft yeah it's popping out a third as you know it's very common in these eco blue gearboxes to just fail pretty much same with the drive shafts as well i don't know if you can remember but when i went out with curbside to do the amazon vans same faults pretty much so yeah this one's 66 so yeah it's actually lasted quite a bit but from what i can see this is also a second hand gearbox that's already in here so take a look you see how there's writing there that tells me that it is a second hand gearbox but anyway I digress, let's go get started. Right, so far we've done all of the bolts. Well, not all of them, but you know what I mean? I've kept this on and another one on. Um, now it's time to drain the oil. Have a look. Oh. Whoa. Well, his gearbox is definitely gone, isn't it? Don't put it near me, blood. You're just distracting. Ah! <laughs> I'm holding it though. So you'd heat up a rock though. Yeah. <laughs> with the flame that we got, wasting our resources to just burn me anyway. Great. All right, up a little bit. There you go. It's not cocky. Man. What do people doesn't know? I bench 120. Oh, All right. Wonderful. One rep max, 135. Right up, fresh. <laughs> the old gearbox is out and it seems like someone's put like silicone or whatever. To it's try and seal, seal the <laughs> to try and seal the leak. Obviously, that's not gonna work. FTE Valio part. It seems like it's been replaced quite recently as well. Because usually it's not FTE. You would see what well, it is Valio, but you would see Ford. That's been replaced recently. Same with the clutch as well and the flywheel. When I say recently, probably about a year ago or so. But yeah, look, it's been murdered. Comment in the description what you think about this quote-unquote fix from the previous mechanic. The gearbox looks like it's been picked up from a bin. It's also got writing on it saying second gear synchro. Who would have thought, eh? Anyway, time to replace the clutch and dual mass flywheel with Satch and Valio parts as this van definitely needs all the help that we can give it. Looking at the new parts gives me a peace of mind that this job will not come back to me. Using good parts and following torque specs definitely sets me up for a job well done. Oosh. Oosh. Let me just pause here. Unfortunately, upon fitting the new gearbox, we later found out that it's only identical and not the same. The reverse switch was attached to the selector. 
it was completely yeah. different so we will Hold be back here some other day with the right gearbox let's move on to the next job and good morning everyone we are here to diagnose an issue with this bmw here we've been here before we replaced this clutch and dual mass flywheel it's the one with the uh, broken gearbox you'll see this video right over here is it this side or this side oh, i don't know anyway yeah we replaced this clutch and dual mass flywheel before he's got something wrong with the first gear on his gearbox he only uses second gear to start moving forward but we're actually not here to replace the gearbox we're here to diagnose his abs fault he does want his gearbox changed soon sooner rather than later because obviously if you're pulling away from second gear you know you're gonna burn out your clutch in no time but for now we're going to be diagnosing a, uh, an abs fault that is coming up on his dash and also his handbrake light stays on well it comes off the switch is not a problem it comes off but as soon as you push it down it's just a yellow amber light that comes up for the parking brake so there's something wrong with that and i'll show you so looking at this nice and silver on this side uh, you can see there's no heat soak or whatsoever if we move on to the near side why are you following me and then if we move on to the near side you can see the discoloration on that it's looking yellow which tells me that there's been a heat soak on this side of his car so we'll investigate that further but for now let's see what the abs fault is so as you can see here guys you can see dsc obviously that's the abs reporting that there's something wrong with the signal on left rear wheel speed sensor so what we got to do with this one just to make sure that it's not the sensor etc etc is we're going to plug in our scope to find out if that wheel speed sensor is producing signal or not and also we're going to be checking his wheel bearing because it might be the cause of why his parking brake or rather his brakes are binding on the rear so we'll see you guys in a moment so i might not even have to get the scope out because we actually have a live data for the wheel speed sensor right here so at the moment we are on the right hand side of the vehicle so we're just making sure that obviously everything works okay and as you can see right there that's reading nicely as i spin the wheel you can see there that's reading fine so we're going to move on to the left hand side and see what's going to happen see if there's something on the left hand side all right so now we're on the left hand side as you can see there will be the top one so let me just highlight that actually you can see it as i spin the wheel we are not getting anything from it so we'll investigate that further we'll remove this and i'll show you how i test if the abs sensor is working or not so here it is as you can see here right there that drive shaft is actually fine i will spun it all the way around and there's no missing tooth whatsoever yes it is a little bit rusty but that should still read regardless because there is gaps in there and uh, i've got the scope over here i uh, don't know if you can see it on the camera but it's on 12 volts it's on live voltage behind the pin and you can see if i was to touch this and this it will not even change not a single beat right there so that tells me that this sensor needs replacing just to double check for the sake of double checking we're going to be removing one more abs sensor on the other side and we'll find out if it is actually the sensor or not right okay so we have now obviously removed the other wheel speed sensor on the other side this is just to prove a diagnostic that this sensor is shot so the sensor on the right hand side we moved it on the left hand side and as you can see right there the left rear wheel speed sensor is now working as i spin the wheel it's working well not the wheel the disc but yeah so we're going to be advising the customer that he needs a new wheel speed sensor and not what the other garage said that he also needs a drive shot or an abs that would have been an expensive one for the customer but yeah anyway let's get to it we're back with this bmw now someone just crashed into my van and just fucked off man like i'll show you the damage it's quite annoying really but it's getting replaced anyway, but it's still didn't even stop. I beeped at him, nothing. Right. Anyway, yeah, let's get this in. If you're wondering why I'm on the right hand side, it's because the working one, which was originally here, is now on the other side. So yeah, we're just gonna be replacing the sensor. And I'm sure that his traction control light will come up. So let's get it done. 
Paget, of course, you know that already. Right, so this sold us a thought. When we opened the box, the wheel speed sensor looked like someone already had returned it because there's like the marks on them and also it looked like it had been... No, no, it's like, you know, when you, when you put a screwdriver on it so that you can pull it, pull it out of the hole, that's what it looked like. So now, look, I'll show you, actually. It had red rubber grease on it and it had that as well. So I was like, okay, give them benefit of the doubt, whatever. Maybe the previous person diagnosed it wrong. No, this is actually faulty. Um, it needs to be returned. So now I'm here to get another one. Oh, gosh. Yeah. All four of them. Nice. Happy days. Right, that's job well done. So let's inform the customer and tell him his car is fixed and ready to go. Now the next thing that he needs to do is to change his first gear, which means changing his gearbox. All right, let's go. Two new batteries as well. <laughs> Two new batteries. Oh.